Hello, my friends. So have you noticed that dopamine is everywhere? I mean, there's the subject of dopamine. There's all kinds of articles about dopamine. Like here's one of my recent ones that I came across. I was just like, what is this? Anti-dopamine parenting can curb a kid's craving for screen screens or sweets. It's like, it, it relates to this trending term. The first time I came across it was in 2019 and it's called dopamine fasting. It implies that we have so much control over our brains that we can isolate dopamine, the boogeyman that everyone kind of makes it out to be that like is the reason behind like why people are addicted to their phones or Instagram or playing video games or chocolate chip cookies. Everything's blamed on dopamine. You know, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous because it's more complicated than that. It's more than an adult or a kid just getting a hit of dopamine. Yet one article after another, there, there's one exception, which I'll get to at the end of the video, but that I recently came across, but that has dopamine as the sole problem, the sole culprit, nothing else. It's all about dopamine. And if you just live this anti-dopamine lifestyle, that your kids or that you as an adult, you know, will be able to curb your your um, desire for sweets and screen time or video games. I mean, whatever your thing is that you desire or want. Even though these articles are everywhere, it's like no one seems to know the entire story about dopamine. And if they do know about it, they're not sharing it. I'm just a person with Parkinson's disease who is frustrated by the reality that every time I read one of these articles that I come across, it never, ever, ever mentions how essential and vital dopamine is for movement. Nor does it discuss ever the other things that dopamine um, is, is behind as well. Even a book titled Dopamine Nation, you would think that the definition of dopamine, uh, which is in here, at least, you know, what she puts in here by any means, there's a reason that I bought it because I'm curious about dopamine like everybody else is, right? But when you go to the index and you look up Parkinson's disease, it's not in here. And then, I mean, there's nothing about even the, the dopamine's role for um, how it's responsible for movement. I'll read this from Cedar sinai Scientists believe a lack of dopamine causes Parkinson's disease. That deficit, they say, comes from a disorder of nerve cells in the part of the brain that produces the chemical. However, dopamine isn't the only neurotransmitter affected in Parkinson's. The malady affects multiple chemical systems in the brain, with dopamine the most recognized and, so far, the most significant. The longtime notion is that it's dopamine, but it's a lot more complicated than that. This article acknowledges that there are multiple chemical systems in the brain at play, and that dopamine is just the most well known so far. Um, and I, I like that acknowledgement because it, it, it acknowledges that, you know, our knowledge continues to change and our, the information that we have evolves. Here we go. Dopamine plays a role in many body functions. As a neurotransmitter, dopamine is involved in movement, memory, pleasurable reward and motivation, behavior and cognition, attention, sleep and arousal, mood, learning, and lactation. Lactation. I don't know how that got on there, but it's on there. I mean, it's just... And then as a hormone, it has it, it has its different, different roles. I mean, it causes blood vessels to relax at low doses. It acts as a vasodilator or constrict at high doses, it acts as a vasoconstrictor. But uh, this is something I pulled up from Psychology Today, but this is an article about uh, addiction and the causes of addiction, and, and here we go. I mean, like, so dopamine is mentioned in the article, but there's biological factors like genes, psychological factors, variations in liver enzymes that metabolize substances are known to influence one's risk of alcohol use disorder, gender, males are more likely to develop, to develop substance abuse disorder than females, psychological factors such as personality factors, trauma and abuse, mental health factors, there's environmental factors like family factors, accessibility factors, peer group, and employment status. I mean like it's just it's not all about dopamine. Now I'm not saying that this woman, um, you know, that these articles have to like go into every single detail that um, dopamine, you know, the, the role that it, the vital role that it plays in many different ways uh, for, for our, our lives and our bodies and our survival. 
Um, but like to not acknowledge it, it's like, it's kind of like, I feel like, you know, writing a book about like uh, oil or, or gas and, and just focusing on and climate change, right? You're writing a book about oil and gas, climate change, and then like you just focus on the automobile and like nothing else that, um, that petroleum is used for, like plastics and, and just all of that stuff. It's just, it's like, it would be incomplete not to just at least give it a light mention, <laughs> something. And I think part, I think, I think part of this problem, why we only know this limited role about dopamine is because it's all that people talk about. I mean, it's just sexier to talk about, you know, like, you know, what, that we seek out what we desire and, and what makes us happy and pleases us, you know. So yeah, if you're looking for a good story, how about this story? That Parkinson's is the fastest growing neurodegenerative disease in the world. It's overtaken Alzheimer's. And that great article that I said I was going to refer to, and this is from the New York Times, this was recent. Um, it's, you know, we have a dopamine problem. The neurochemical has become a boogeyman for people worried about addiction and indulgence. But the real story is a lot more complex. Thank you, New York Times. Thank you. So in this New York Times, they quote something from her. See, this is why you gotta you know, work your sources. But anyways, okay. Because video games and pornography can be habit forming, some researchers, included, including Dr. Lemke, have hypothesized that they might cause similar signs of tolerance in the brain. However, in an interview with the New York Times, she admitted that this theory is inferred from studies of stimulant drugs and that there isn't currently evidence to back it up. As a result, Dr. Barrage and others have critiqued the idea. One reason is that the amount of dopamine released in response to video games, pornography, social media, and junk food is substantially lower than that released in response to addictive drugs. I'm going back to my I love dopamine and I feel like a lot of people have gotten hoodwinked by this trend of dopamine fasting. I mean, it just sounds cool, doesn't it? It sounds like something that like just, you know, like the super, super like branding or marketing team came up with because like dopamine, oh, it's like the pleasure, um, it's the good, feel good neurotransmitter and like, ooh, that's bad. We don't want anyone to feel too good. Um, but like, you know, let's just dopamine fasting. And then that's another trendy word too. Everyone's talking about fasting too. And then you combine these two powerful words and it's just like, tr or trending words, like dopamine, fasting, and then bam, there you have it. I mean, it's, it's one thing to talk about balance and moderation, I feel like, but again, going back to the blaming dopamine for all of like these problems, it's just, I disagree. I love dopamine and that's my, I should title that my video. I should title the video. I don't know actually, but anyways, that's it. Um, as always, thank you for your comments. Subscribe if you haven't to let me know what your thoughts are and uh, thank you. Straight.